Alrighty, everybody. Welcome back to the Tyler Creates YouTube channel. My name is Tyler. Uh, today is episode four, I think, of the, uh, it's either three or four, kind of getting messed up here on days, of the 351M rebuild teardown dealio that I didn't plan on doing, but I'm doing. On today's video, we're going to be trying to uh, um, polish the crank and make sure we're going to check all these specs and everything, make sure it's within spec. If it's not, we'll go from there. But uh, you can check out previous videos over on the channel. Uh, I'll have one linked up in the corner somewhere and probably down in the description. Uh, other than that, we're going to jump right into it. Um, and I'll explain to you guys what I'm doing. If I'm bending down, it's because I have the camera saturated. Kind of weird. So, yeah. Alrighty, everybody. So, here we have a crankshaft. Um, this right here is what distributes power out the back of the engine uh, via pistons being connected here, via... Uh, connecting rods and there's bearings that sit here. Well here specifically. There's four of these. These are your carrier bearings for your crank um, These ensure that it doesn't flex in the motor and do weird stuff. These right here are where your connecting rod and connecting rod end caps I believe uh, Clamp on uh, your pistons essentially sit here and here and this thing spins and drives everything up and down and whew, 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 Amazing stuff happens. So you want these to be a mirror finish and as you can see they are not a mirror finish so what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be starting out with 400 grit and there's a lot of videos online you can watch people doing this polishing crankshaft journals um, and people use WD-40 you don't want to use water uh, because it rusts and it's, I don't believe it's as good of a lubricant um, so we'll start out at 400 we'll go up to what do I got here 800 and 1500 and we'll see how it goes um, your main goal is you just want to get shiny you want to make it as shiny as possible and take out anything gnarly. Um, you also want to check, we will do this later in the video, and make sure that your journals aren't egg-shaped or that something's weird with them. Um, you want to do that with a micrometer. Uh, and you want to find the specs that they're supposed to be within. I have the specs. I don't remember them offhand. We'll get to that later in the video. But I'm going to cut a little strip here. And what everybody does is they cut a little strip. Uh, as you can see, this is a little thin. That's okay. Uh, they'll... Put a little strip, wrap it around, and I just took some t-shirt material right here, and you'll take the t-shirt material, you'll wrap it around, the sandpaper will be in there, you'll see it, and you'll wrap it around like this, if I can do it maybe like so, and we'll just work it back and forth. We may have to go, uh, hopefully this thing doesn't fall down, uh, I may have to go like... I'll probably have to go like this, back and forth. We'll figure it out. So what we're gonna wanna do is cut a strip of this. Right here. And your hands are probably gonna get dirty. You'll just have to deal with that. And you wanna clean it out frequently as well. So we'll put that on there like so. And we will hold it. That is really annoying that that thing's doing that. I hate that that thing does that. It's even doing it worse. We'll go like, it's wanting to slide off. I guess this is how you do it. It is not working. I don't understand how you do these. Man, this is not working very well. A lot of people use, you can either use uh, t-shirt material, you can use shoe strings, you can do all kinds of stuff. This is proving to be difficult. It's def this is definitely interesting, definitely a learning experience. Um, just that little bit didn't really do much, which that's okay. I mean, it definitely made it look way better. I'm going to go ahead and zoom you guys in a teeny bit. My arm's definitely acting up today. It hurts. Um, we're going to go ahead and spray a little bit more WD-40 on there. Like this. There we go. That works better. It definitely wants to slide off, though. So... You just kind of got to, I guess, get the hang of it. Maybe you want it to go... There we go. 
That actually is working pretty darn good. The goal is to get it to evenly distribute. Oh, that worked way better. Why are we getting caught up on each other? I don't... There we go. Oh, it slipped off. Well, we'll go ahead and clean it. Dang it, it fell on the ground. We'll, we're going to get this one all the way finished, and then I'll come back to you guys. Maybe fast forward, I'm not quite sure yet. Oh, wow. Wow, that's way different. Holy smokes. That's amazing. That worked really good. That worked really well. <laughs> wow. I'm like thoroughly surprised. We'll do this a teeny bit more and then we'll step up to another size. Okay, we're gonna call that good for the, uh, you know, the 400 grit. Alrighty, everybody, it has been a little while. I just realized I'm out of 800 grit. I'm also pretty tired. Um, I don't know what this is, that's 2,000. A little bit of 800 there, but not enough. Uh, I ended up going up to 2,000 on this. So as you can see, we got that one, uh, not done. That one, I need to do a couple more. 400 on, I haven't done anything else. That one, I'm finished doing 400, so I'll move to eight, then 15, then two. And that one, I'm done doing. Uh, you can see that there is some lines in it, but you can also see there's a reflection that goes all the way up to 2000 grit, so. All the way around. I mean, you can see there's my camera there. Can't really see the camera there. You can barely, you know, that versus that. And it's definitely got some little bit of scratches. Um, that's probably from, I never really showed you guys how bad these bearings were. As you can see they are junk so that's going to be the front most bearing towards the front of the engine uh carrier bearing i guess is what they'd be called that one's also toast you can see where it's all like jacked and super rough you got the third one back right there sorry if i'm shaking a little bit and then this rearmost one which really rough so and then this would have been the bearing that would have rode here and as you can see it's junk so pretty much every single one looks like this this engine was on its way out i would have driven this probably not driven this probably another maybe 100 200 miles and it would have started knocking away or something would have seized Here's a uh, bearing that, here's a rod bearing. It's dirty, but it's still junk. I actually never checked if these were undersized or not. They're standard. Standard bearings, which probably means if I had to take a guess, these are the original bearings that were in the truck which means they're from 1970. I don't think someone replaced them. Here's another one as a standard as well. Yep, standard FM 
3400 CP WOSTD. As I'm editing this video, uh, this is me well into the project by now. Um, that clip you just watched was filmed last week. Um, I figured I would say I have never done anything like this before. Uh, I have definitely had lots of stuff to do with engines. Um, I'm a gearhead. But I did not know what I was getting myself into tearing the motor. T tearing the motor out wasn't a real huge deal. It definitely took longer than I expected. But in the coming series, <laughs> in the coming parts of this, uh, you will see that I ended up having to do quite a bit more than I anticipated. Um, it has been probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Uh, this is my first time ever doing anything like what you'll see in this series. So uh, just bear with me if I mispronounce anything or leave some things out. Um, I know the terms, I know what everything is, I just, well, man, I don't know the terms, but I, I know what the parts are. Um, and, uh, yeah, I didn't know what I was getting myself into, so, uh, um, hope you enjoy. Uh, back to, um, wee lad that has never removed an engine before, quite yet. I've, uh, helped people to remove engines, but I've never done it by myself, so, um, yes. And also, uh, I didn't have an engine stand for any of this, as you'll see later on. Uh, I'm assuming hopefully you all have the money to have an engine stand. I didn't have the money and the engine stand was being taken up by a 460 uh, out of my dad's truck. Regardless, it ended up working great and uh, yeah, uh, we'll get back to it. Okay everybody, it has been a couple days since I've recorded. Uh, I had to take a break. I also ran out of 800 grit sandpaper. I ended up getting this journal done here, this main journal, and this rod journal is up to 800 grit. I still have to do to do 1,500 and 1,000, or 1,500 and 2,000 on that one. Uh, this one, I just did a little bit um, with 400 grit the other day, and then I stopped. So I've kind of perfected this method here a teeny bit, and, and I mean, I haven't perfected it. I've, well, in terms of doing it since I started, I've definitely perfected it. Um, I did cut this piece a little short. You wanna, so I've seen multiple things online. Some of them, you can take the uh, tape and, or you can take, so on some of them, you can take the sandpaper and tape it together to keep it from coming off. That's especially problematic on this one as it constantly walk, wants to walk off the journal because it's not contained between two uh, weights here, I believe is what those are called. I'm not, they're counterbalance weights basically. Um, but you just wanna get this, get yourself uh, I've been using t-shirt material, you can also use shoestrings, um, I saw a guy use a belt, like a old, uh, uh, like, alternator belt, that one I'm not super fond of, um, but, you just, pretty simple, you want to get your WD-40, you want to just spray it on there, and they can be kind of hard to get started, um, I want to make sure you put WD-40 on there as well. Uh, I am wearing gloves, the WD-40 kind of in my hands, like shed a whole bunch of skin and they didn't feel too great. So this piece of, uh, this piece of 400 grit may be too small here. So what I've figured to do is you can either do it on the top or the bottom, but you'll go like this, you'll go around, down and through, it's kind of hard to get to down there. Pull this one across so you're pulling this side over to that side and that side over to this side. Um, it can be kind of difficult in these in these enclosed rod journals. Um, come on. And then I like to do it one more time I found. This is where it can be kind of hard to um, get it to move. As you can see it's stuck. The uh, it don't move. So what I'm going to do is start out like this. Oh, even that won't move. See what it wants to do there? It wants to not move. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to kind of start by hand here. Even by hand, it can be kind of difficult to do. I'm not pushing or anything. I'm not doing anything crazy. So I'm just trying to get these, these gnarly edges or dings taken off so the sandpaper will uh, will move. Even moving it by hand, it's pretty tight. So uh, I thought I had another piece. Uh, I'm actually gonna use this. This is the bottom of the t-shirt. It works pretty good. Um, what you're looking for is even distribution across the journal. 
you don't want to sand one side of the journal, you know, more than the other, because then you'll have, I believe it's called taper on the journal. Um, and you want to check all this with a micrometer. Uh, I have checked with a micrometer. Oh my. I have checked with a micrometer this one. This is in spec for standard. As far as I can tell, no one's ever done any bearings to this engine. All the bearings are standard, which means they're probably all stock bearings, you know, from 1977. That's within spec, and this one is within spec as well. So, as you can see, this is definitely a lot wider. Um, and it still does not want to uh, move. I had trouble with this one the other day as well. It does not want to... It does not, I mean, it does not want to move at all, so. Um, and I'm not quite sure why, if I'm being honest. I don't, I don't know why it does not want to move because there's plenty of room. I mean, it is stuck, stuck. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut a longer piece, I guess, and we'll try that. And it does not want to do it. Uh, I have found that it is easier to lay it over rather than come from under and try to clamp it together. It, it. Okay, everybody, I actually had to hand sand this to get it to like start moving. Um, and even then it's wanting to catch. Um, I had to basically take my hand and take the sandpaper and roll it back and forth. There was no way that it was gonna roll with this. It was, for some reason, it was catching pretty hard. I think that's because this journal's pretty, the surface is pretty disturbed, so the sandpaper needed to knock a teeny bit off before it could actually start working. So as you can see, I'm just going back and forth. Um, you can maybe wrap it one more time like this. I'm gonna go like this. So you can go side to side. Um, you can go one strand. It what you're trying to look for is to get the most coverage of the uh, journal. So what you'd really want to do is, um, so you'll go around. So this side comes from over here, and this side comes from over here, being wrapped like that. So then you take them, go across. Uh, you want them to be even, so maybe go like that, and then. I'd take both of them down there and rotate it up and around. Now you got full coverage. And uh, if it's still getting tight, one thing you wanna do is make sure that you don't have tension on both of them and like pulling down but keeping tension on it. You wanna let it relax. See how it just swung like that? What I was trying to do was originally, one thing that is a problem is if you keep them both tight, see how it binds up. Rather, you just kind of let it work itself back and forth. Do this a whole bunch. Um, each grit, I'm doing about three times a journal. So I'll do 400 three times. I'll clean it off two times. Uh, and then if it's good and I don't need to move further, like do a fourth time or something, move on to 800 grit. Do 800 grit three or four times, three times. Uh, you definitely want to sand more at a lower grit. So if you have problems, you want to try to try to get it out at a lower grit because a higher grit just won't do it. Like, really you want to get all the stuff out on your first grit. So 400 grit, I want to get it to where they 100 grit, 1000 grit, and 2000 grit just polish rather than material removing because they don't remove material at all. Um, that was a screw up on this one. I didn't do... 400 and 800 enough. So when I got up there, it was kind of, I didn't like the way it looked, so I ended up having to redo it. So I will stop there, pull it off. As you can see, there's, I don't know if you guys can see that at all. Looks kind of weird in the camera. Okay, so, and I just got a dirty rag here that I'm using to wipe the journal off. As you can see, you got all that on there. Wipe a whole bunch of it off. Like so, just kind of go all the way. You want to go all the way around it. Um, so, real quick, I guess we'll do some, uh, well, here in just a second we'll do it. I'm going to talk to you guys about when you need to get your crank grinded or machined. There's a difference between, well, sanded and grinded. 
grinded machine kind of well it's not kind of it is and then sanding is a completely different deal i do believe um but we'll talk about that in just a little bit here i gotta clean this off i'm just spraying wd-40 on this and wiping it off with a rag i'm gonna feed that one under these are definitely harder to do these these single main journals because they're so tight in between here so you got it like that and then i'm gonna even it out i'm gonna go one more time around and then i'm gonna bring both of them down grab it with this hand and bring both of them up so i'm pulling upward and i'm just gonna start going back and forth and you want to get long strokes you also maybe want to vary it you want to go from like here so maybe sand over here to like this at this angle up maybe over here because what you're doing is um you're kind of ex it, you're kind of moving the pressure around a teeny bit i've noticed like on some of these there's definitely a spot that maybe is like a, maybe a little let i don't know if i should say less sanded because that would mean it was egg shaped because it's not egg shaped uh, the mic it's definitely not there's just areas where you can tell that i mean the sandpaper is removing like less than ten thousandths it the sandpaper is barely the sandpaper is removing like i don't know it's not removing much basically the sandpaper is just taking them it's just kind of diffusing and taking major imperfections out like this used to be pretty rough here and now it's not that bad and this one will be the same way um so I'm just going to continue doing this. This will be my this will be my third time on this journal, but I can already tell it's going to need four probably. So Alrighty, so I'm going to throw some tech at you guys about stuff I've learned online doing research about crankshafts and what to look out for and when to get it sanded or or machined uh, or to leave it alone and just polish it. So your journal or this is your main journal, these are your rod journals. Uh, your rod journal, your I like call, they're I think they're called rod caps. I like calling them a rod end cap. Rod end cap, you know, this is what swings your piston around, creating uh, intake combustion power, all that, all those strokes on the engine. This right here is to keep the crankshaft from flexing under power. There's one, two, three, four. This has four of them. Uh, I do believe some other engines have varying amounts of these, um, but this basically doesn't uh, oscillate. I guess you could call it at all. This has different, you know, contact points as the piston's swinging around. It's putting more pressure in certain areas. This does have varying degrees, but much less so. Mainly, uh, I believe it's up and down um, as the crank's trying to flex when you're under power. But um, things to look out for. So if a main journal, this is a main journal, these are rod journals. If a main journal on a crank or a rod journal has an impact mark, the problem with sanding is the impact mark will push material around it out. It'll actually create a mountain for the, of the material and leave an indent. And the problem with that is, is as you sand, it will sand the mountain of material down, but it'll also sand the downslope of the material behind it down, just shrinking it. It won't actually remove it. Um, whereas if you were to get it ground or uh, even sanded, uh, those machines are designed to basically take the whole, take it down to flat and make it smooth. Um, so the problem with polishing, if you have an impact mark is that it won't really work. And the reason you don't want that is because of this part here around the impact area around it is raised. Um, this rides on a bearing. So there's a uh, super loud vehicle just went by people speeding. Um, okay. now. Pardon me if I get something wrong. If you're some old timer, leave me be. I'm I'm doing my best here. Um, trying to trying to do it right and not let these not let these things go un unexplained and fade off. So here is the main cap uh, bearing for n the number one uh, main journal here. The main cap is this guy right here. This guy clamps this to the block, keeping it from moving around. There's another one of these on the block side, um, which is actually right here. I'm not going to get these mixed up. Block journal, uh, end cap journal. As you can see, they're wore down to the bearing material. Um, so, how an engine is supposed to work is this is never supposed to touch this. 
it is supposed to ride on a thin layer of oil. That's why you have oil in your engine, and that's why a good oil pressure is good, very important. Uh, if you don't have this, they make contact, and it will wear down the bearing, uh, tons of deposits. I don't know if you can hear this bearing. I'll, I'll see if you guys can hear it, but this bearing's junk. Okay, that bearing should be like that. It should be nice and smooth, uh, and instead it's destroyed. There we go. As you can see, that bearing is toast. So what happens is, if you have an impact mark and a raised area around the impact mark, is, from what I would assume, is that because this is raised, as it's sweeping by the bearing, it's taking the the layer of oil off and back here there's now a thinner layer of oil for this to ride on and if this is big enough this could actually make contact wiping all the oil away which then will make more contact back here even though this is continuously oiling it's got a oiling hole uh, it's still just really bad you don't you really don't want that now my crank has lots of lines what lines are from they're usually from a piece of material going in between and creating cutting versus an impact mark they cut into the journal now there are varying degrees of grooves on a on a crank journal obviously if they're really gnarly uh, you probably want to get them machined out or sanded out um, but these don't really do much they basically hold oil from what i can tell unless they're raised up on the edges of the line um, they just hold oil from what everyone says so they're not a huge deal. Uh, you want to get them out as much as you can because they do cause, technically they would cause a disturbance in the oil flow. Basically you want the oil to be rotating around this when it's going, you know, 3,500 RPM. This is spinning really fast. So you basically want the oil to have as little resistance as possible to keep everything oiled. Uh, and while these do hold oil, you know, rather than an impact mark slowing the oil down or wiping the oil away, uh, these just kind of hold it. Um, so they're not a huge deal on these, on my crank. I'm not super worried about it. Uh, it's actually turned out quite well. It definitely has its scarring, but you know what? That's okay for what, for, for me, it's not, you know, I don't have this thing turning at really high RPM or anything crazy. These engines don't particularly like high RPM. Um, so this will be fine for my application. If you're doing a race engine or something, uh, you want everything to be pretty, pretty tight knit. You want it to all be the way it should be. And some other things, just some minor things, uh, your oiling holes, you want to feel them and make sure that they don't have any raised parts because they'll cut right into the bearing. Um, they'll cause problems. I've heard people will uh, chamfer the edge. They'll actually smooth it out. I don't really feel the need to do that on these because you usually can feel stuff like that with your finger. It'll catch. Um, and these don't really have anything like that, thankfully. So uh, they actually feel really, really good. Now, obviously this crank is not perfect, um, but I'm doing the best I can. Like I said, it should be good for my applications. Um, the way this thing oils is uh, this, uh, there's a hole right, where is it? Is it? Yeah, right here. So on the bottom of this, there's an oiling hole, just like this one. Oil comes into this journal, passes some, a machine actually drills up through here and it goes to this one, this feeds this one, and they also kind of feed each other. But for the most part, the journals feed the uh, rod journals. So uh, tapering is also another problem. This is why you want to get a micrometer. What a mic does is it you just can test in tens of thousands, in ten thousandths. Uh, you know, if your if your crank's all jacked up, um, tapering is where the journal is actually tapered off at an angle. I don't know much about tapering. It seems like it's not a very common thing to have a crank journal taper. It seems like more than often they oblong or they get impact marks or something like that on them. Uh, but tapering is basically where the journal tapers off. And if that happens, I actually don't know what they do. I'm assuming they would machine it. Uh, the crank may be no good. I don't know. There is a point where a crankshaft becomes no good. Uh, there's too little material. They get. They just start to get way out of spec um and it seems like you know uh one of these online is like 300 bucks so you know at that point probably be better to go buy a brand new one start fresh but uh yeah as you can see the um bearings 
for this are toast. So this engine would not made it much longer. They're definitely in rough shape. Um, I'll see if I can get a close up shot of that and that's what they all look like. So without further ado, we're just gonna keep going along, make sure everything's clean. You wanna make sure everything is clean. There's no pieces of metal being cycled around as you're sanding because those will also cause groove marks or scratches. Um, and then we'll end it off by polishing. So I'm gonna start going through this and start knocking it out. Uh, there's really not much else to say. Uh, you also want to, if you really care, you can get the crank, uh, I believe it's called uh, Magnafluxed, um, and that's where they, uh, from the video I watched, they apply a, a paste or something that shows up more in the crack with a magnetic, with a weird light. It was a really weird looking thing. It was looked looked pretty scientific. Um, that's also an engine blocks. So they can do it for cracks, but it seems like they were checking around here in the video I watched for cracking. Uh, so you'll want to inspect for cracking. Uh, that's obviously a huge deal. A crack is a major, major weak point, and the crank is for sure probably junk. I've also heard of people actually welding the journal and getting it machined down, um, which I don't know. Uh, you could try that. But uh, yeah, without further ado, if I think of anything else, I'll say it. Um, uh, remember, there is a point of diminishing returns where the crank does need to have some some serious makeover done to it. Um. Okay, everybody, we are done doing 400 grit on the entire crank, all the journals. Um, this one, I don't know if I mentioned it before. Oh, and also disclaimer, um, take everything I say at your own risk, attempt all this at your own risk. Um, I say that because, I don't know, the day we live in is pretty jacked and someone could sue me for trying to help them. So attempt everything at your own risk in the past of this video and in the future and in the present. Um, but nevertheless, uh, this was 400, 800, 1500, 2000, buffed. I'll probably do another polish, buff, polish again. This is four and eight. Uh, I'll probably do eight on that again. And then I'm just gonna do eight on all these. But 800 grit, 1500 grit, and 2000 grit are probably gonna take off in the like 100,000th range. I mean, they're not gonna take anything off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure now so I can go order the um, main and rod journals or bearings. Um, I'm gonna measure the main and rod journals and make sure they're within or out of spec. Hopefully they're all within spec. That'll suck if one of them's out. You're gonna wanna double check all this online on your own accord. It's just You should be able to just type it in and it'll all come up. Uh, you may have to do some searching on the interwebs, but it'll be there. And if worse comes to worse, create an account on a, uh, on a forum page and ask someone there and they'll be able to tell you. But um, this is the info that I was able to get so far here. So you have um, 351 modified and 400 uh, modified, and then there's there was uh, Cleveland on the website as well, but I didn't I didn't uh, use that. Um, so the main journals need to be within a. It's, the website doesn't use a min or a max. It, it's just you're supposed to be within these two specs. Uh, 2.9994 inches max is 3.0002. Uh, the raw journal, so main journals. Whoa, whoa! So, um, main, dude, can you just? So, main, so main journals are this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. One, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I said four earlier. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Raw journals, two, four, six, eight. Um, cylinder 
one and five cylinders two and six cylinders three and seven and cylinders four and eight i do believe um so rod journals need to be within 2.9994 inches uh, and 3.0002 inches you're going to want to do this with a micrometer um if they're not within these specs um i mean uh, in my opinion so after doing stuff on this crank uh, would I put this crank in someone's vehicle? Absolutely not. Uh, but I am I'm trying to save money here. I actually don't have the money, so I'm just not even going to entertain it. I'm going to do it myself. Plus, it makes an awesome YouTube video for you guys to watch, more so than anything else. Uh, but I'm doing the best I can, and I think this is going to do fantastic, actually, with even though it's got some grooves and some, some pitting, I think it's going to do fantastic. Uh, I look at it this way. If it ran with... Let me see if I can get you guys to actually see how bad these are. If it ran with bearings that all of them look like that, um, I'm going to say it's probably going to do just fine. Um, here's a rod journal, a rod bearing. So uh, I think at the very least I'm helping it. <laughs> so I, and I know at the very least I'm helping it. Um, and then for your rod journals you're going to want to be within and these specs both go for the 351m and the 400 modified uh, a 400 modified just has a bigger stroke it's got a four inch stroke instead of a three and a half inch stroke and the center to center is uh, two inches instead of 1.75 uh, center to center is from this center to this center so from if you were to draw a line out to here and draw this line this right here is 1.75 and on a uh, 400 it's gonna be two inches um, 400s have a bigger stroke obviously uh, so your rod journals are going to be a minimum of so 2.3103 and the max is 2.3111 so I'm gonna get you guys set up on the tripod and I'm gonna get the micrometer out and see if I can't figure out how to do this